Hello, thank you for checking out my video today. Today's video is going to be about the 80188. So you did read the title correct. This is going to be an 80188 PC XT compatible motherboard. Um, I'm going to talk about the whole board where some of you have not seen any of my videos before. Um, so what I've got is a project here and I've kind of modularized it. So I've got a main board, a processor board, and a memory board, and then our, our drive here. On the main board, you've got your seven ISA card slots, and this fits into a ATX case, uses an ATX power supply. Uh, as you've noticed, there's two extra slots here, and this is for the uh, processor, either one, and a DMA controller in either one. I added this to have uh, a few of the features that are not uh, on the ISA bus available to the processor from, you know, like IRQ1, uh, the power good pin, and then uh, a few other things we'll talk about here in a second. So, so what, what I've done though on the main board is I've, I put my kind of the things that every PC needs. Uh, your, your keyboard controller here. You've got your USB drive that plugs in here. And then I've got the system clock. Now this is not for the processor. This is for the ISA bus. Uh, it provides the oscillate pin, the system clock on here. There's a clock divider here that, that provides the clock for the uh, keyboard controller. Then I've got my PC speaker. It works. It's not 100%, but it works. And then I've got some decoding here, here, for the um, for the for the keyboard controller and the USB, as well as I put the chip select for zero, a uh, port zero, port twenty, port forty, port sixty, port eighty. I think that's all I've got on here, so that um, when you build your processor, you don't have to put decoding on it. You can just put your system timer and your interrupt controller at you know port twenty and port forty. That's in hex, of course. Um, so, the memory card is just a 512k slug of RAM here. I put in a 32k piece up here. This is just an upper memory. It starts at address F0000. And then the ROM is here, this 32k piece that starts at F8000. And I put it on a zip socket so you can take it in and out to reprogram it and play with the code. So. The uh, USB is just a standard CH376S host. Um, you usually get these from two to five bucks off eBay or somewhere else on the internet. And then I just use, uh, this one's a 64 megabyte USB drive. I've, I've kind of found the smaller the drive, the better for these projects. But I, I think you can put in larger drives if you want. I haven't really tried anything over uh, one gigabyte. So, Talk about the processor here. So many of you probably already know that the, if you've read up on the 8186 or the 8188, it's a microcontroller version of the 8088, 8086. So it's got built-in system timer, it's got a built-in interrupt controller, and it's got a built-in some DMA. Uh, the clock is built in, so that's nice. We didn't have to put a clock on this. Um, to make this work in a PC though, what I did, because that's been the problem is the built-in items are not aligned with uh, the PC for like the port addresses. So what I did was I, I threw all that out and I put everything external. So really, if you see my 8088 card, all I did was copy it and I just put the 80188 processor on there. The um, system timer is just connected to, to a port. Um, it doesn't actually connect to the processor in any way other than on the data bus, address bus. The interrupt controller does have to communicate with the processor. And uh, the schematics are, are online. They're in my description. You'll find my GitHub page if you want to look at the exact pinout. But uh, I want to say it's uh, interrupt zero and interrupt one. 
you connect the IRQ and then the interrupt acknowledge to. Um, I had to add a resistor here for a pull up for the interrupt acknowledge. And then over here, I've bridged those two pins. That's a five volt for, and that's the uh, select. So what I've done, when this thing boots up, there's, there is setup code for the 8188. And the only setup code that I have used so far, and I'll show you when I boot it up, I'll show you in the code, is at port uh, FF, uh, FE, you write uh, 60 FF, and I'll explain that more when we pull up the code. What that does, though, is it tells it that it has an external interrupt controller. And this becomes the master controller, and this the the onboard controller becomes the slave controller. And the way I wired this though, the slave controller can never be accessed. I just chose to, I have no use for it. So that's kind of what I did there. Uh, something else, if you look at the schematics, there is no IO mem chip select or pins on this. What they did was they had uh, some memory pins. So like uh, six memory pins. For different pieces of memory you could uh, program. When it boots up, it'll it'll automatically detect the ROM, I think, as a thousand bytes. It, you'll have to read the manual, be a hundred percent on that. And in that ROM, in that thousand bytes or so, you've got to set up the rest of the chips. And then it'll know that it'll through software, it'll chip select which chip uh, of ROM you want. Uh, same thing with the ports. There's uh, six or seven uh, port chip select pins that come off of this, and you program which one to select. So that right there is not PC compatible at all. It has a read and a write pin, but it does not have the IO mem select pin. What it does have, though, is the status pins. The S2 is particular. Um, on my upper latch here, you got to latch it. So you, you'll see this in the schematics. You latch it here, and that S2 becomes your IO mem pin. So that was some of the modifications to make this work as a PCXT. If you uh, have a lot of interest in this, I'll uh, you know email me. I'll we can discuss it a little bit. So anyway, we'll boot it up here. Um, before I do, if you if you want one of these, I'm going to make a couple available. Uh, with you know, I made the modifications. I've got uh, five of them being made right now. Uh, so if you want one, I'll, I can make a complete one or a blank one for you, and you give it a try. So, but bottom line is it's it's not really a cost savings, but it's just more of a unique item. So, anyway, I'll uh, piece this thing together and then we'll uh, boot it up. All right, I've got it all piece together here. Um, see if I can get a good picture of it. I did get some uh, screen capture uh, hardware. hasn't come up yet, so still gonna have to bear with this uh, blurry screen. And I did have to use my little screen on this because of uh, the uh, it's using a CGA graphics card. I had to dust off my BIOS my that I wrote. To, to work with this. The uh, one I'm using on the V40, I haven't been able to get to boot on this. So, also one thing, I haven't to, uh, been able to boot FreeDOS. I don't know if it's the USB drive type that I'm using or if it's actually FreeDOS that's preventing it from booting. So you can see we're all booted up. Uh, this one's running, I think, 5 megahertz. Uh, just put a 10 megahertz uh, crystal in there. Might be uh, 12 megahertz crystal. So, you can see it booted up. All right, this this uh, I haven't done much on my BIOS, so there's definitely some issues in here. It's read only on the drive, so we won't be able to save anything. Uh, it is it is fairly quick. Um, let's just look at debug for a minute. Let's uh, unassemble the uh, the code that you have to the setup code for the chip. So there's all kinds of setup codes you can do. Uh, you could even do like, um, if you wanted to put some wait cycles in there, 
those chip select lines have wait cycles you can program in. So you could just, you could fake it. You could tell it, yeah, that, that block of memory, you know, from 512K, that chip selects it to become active. But we want some wait cycles in there. So you could do things like that. And uh, you might be able to get some better performance out of this. So anyway, we, we unassembled the code. Let's see if we got it here. So right here, out. Uh, so we set DX to uh, FFFE. We're going to out AX. And AX we set to 60FF. If you look in the manual, uh, basically the uh, 0, 1, uh, let's try to think here, the digit. So that second digit, 0, 1, 1, 0, by default, this is 2, 0, FF. Now, if you look, that, that third digit in the book, it, uh, it's almost like it's, uh, it's not needed. It actually doesn't, it doesn't specify even what it is, just X'd out. So I don't even know why that one's a, uh, listed. So I've tried this with four, so that would be zero, one, zero, zero. And that, that, like I said, that second digit, by setting that to one, that tells it has an external interrupt controller. So that's the only thing you got to set. The FF is actually the relocation register for, um, where your setup registers are going to be at. So you can relocate them anywhere in the, uh, I.O. or the memory addresses. And it's, uh, oh, I want to say like, it's like 256 uh, bytes. So, definitely got to read that, that manual. So, anyway, we'll, uh, we'll see what works. I know with my BIOS, a lot of things did not ever work. So, let's, oh, I want to try that one. We can try that one, I guess. No, it did work. Okay, so let's see how far we can make it before it crashes. You can see we've got a 10 megabyte drive, FAT12. It's the primary. Uh, exited fine. Um, I know edit won't work. Uh, it's my BIOS, really. It's not the processor. Um... Can't overfell with games. Let's see. Uh, so, this is a game I wrote. It seems to be working fine. You use uh, W A S D X to add, or S D to move. Q exits works fine. So it, it, it's not crashing. That's what's important here. <laughs> um, you can see it works. So anyway, uh, like I said, uh, the GitHub will, uh, link will be there in the description. It's my PC XT compatible GitHub page. So there's a, a processor card for the 8188. Uh, there's a V40 processor card and a 8088 processor card all in there. And any of them will work on this project, but as you can see, whether or not the BIOS works, that's a different story. So, anyway, uh, thanks for checking out my video today.